Ladies and gentlemen and citizens of the world, you are now tuned into Cannabis Talk 101 featuring Blue and Joe Grande, the number one source for everything cannabis. I'm Daniel Hidalgo, member of the production team here at CT 101, and beside me now is Teddy the Show Dog, star of Teddy's Corner exclusively on the Cannabis Talk magazine. And on today's episode, we're bringing you the best educational snippets of 2023. Some of these clips include amazing guests who have brought knowledge and serious game to the conversation, and we hope you all enjoy it as much as I did. Three in four women will experience sexual pain that's caused uh, during sex or just in general, and you mentioned those pain problems. What are those, and elaborate on those for us right. men who have no clue what those are. <laughs> for, first of all, women of middle age, when they hit perimenopause or become menopausal, our estrogen drops, we have hormonal changes, and that affects how much natural lubrication our body produces. So many, many women become dry, and it's called vaginal dryness. Mm. That hurts when you, when you have sex or prevents women even from having sex. Uh, so there's that, and every woman gets into this. I'm in my 50s. So I can tell and you. Don't you look, give her up for her <laughs> for being in her 50s. Come on, man. come on. I mean, oh, I'm hitting on you true. all day, every day. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so that's a. That's what 50 looks like? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's a very, very common issue. I mentioned the endometriosis. So that's a, a physical condition that a lot of women get. One in 10 women have this, as well as something called vaginismus, where you have pelvic floor muscle spasms. So basically, there's many different medical conditions women have that cause pain and makes it so they can't even have sex sometimes or even put a tampon inside. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what happens when you have some of these pain conditions is it causes inflammation in your body. So just like you might hurt your knee and you have an inflamed knee, you have your pelvic floor muscle, which is your orgasm muscle in your groin area. Men and women have this. And it becomes inflamed with pain. So by putting the CBD into my Go Love Serum, women can apply it, it helps reduce the pain, it helps reduce the inflammation, and even lowers anxiety, so they're often able to have sex again with their husbands. Is this something that women should be using, just, you know, wake up in the morning, go to the restroom, go to work, put a little bit on? Absolutely, yep, masturbation and works well, and some women are using it just as a daily moisturizer. That's what I would think yeah. too, just put it in there. To just yeah. I suggest use it three times a day in the morning, just like you put lotion on your body or you put lotion on your face. You can put, put lotion on your vaginal skin too, especially if you have discomfort during the day. I'm not wow. trying to be silly right now, but would this be good too for anybody for the ass as well, like for the rectum and just keeping it moist and keeping <laughs> it, you know, being CBD'd up? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to have sex in your butt, but just to just loosen it up. Like sometimes people get a rash or something else and it could be good for that, I'm imagining. Yes. Yeah, any rash is good for CBD, just like you have it in balms or lotions. This, for any of your, your personal private parts, you can use it for the anti-inflammatory purposes. And let's feel this because if I'm not mistaken, Blue, you ready for this? Yeah. She says this feels like the inside of a pussy. <laughs> Those weren't my exact words. But that's or, how I interpreted yeah. it. <laughs> I vagina. mean, that's what I, but, well, well, no. I said vagina. No, mm -hmm. I think she said pussy. I, I did, I did. Well, that's not, yeah, how I, that's, that's, not that's, that's not how I, that's not how I, that's not how I usually say it. But he, he did paraphrase me perfectly. Okay, so here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm like, we're friends. I know, I'm like, I, mean, I'm I thought I said around. it just like you did. <laughs> All right, I you mean, caught me. <laughs> I think, I think there's a huge need in the marketplace for an education and something that people can use. But like you said, you know, me being in this environment now for three to four years with you guys, I see a lot of different industries roll through here. The, the typical surface level is all right, the dispensaries, the grows, et cetera. But there's so many ancillary businesses where these people aren't even touching the flower. Give, give us some examples of what those companies are doing or what can we teach the students there? Well, you know, you actually did kind of just hit the nail on the head a little bit, Tony, is that there that there's a, Every aspect of any other business, a lot of it is ancillary. You know, I mean, let's look at like tobacco or, or even alcohol. You're gonna tell me that Anheuser-Busch, all they're doing is just producing alcohol or, or brewing alcohol, you know, and, and they're not. And that's what a lot of folks think that when it comes to cannabis, it's like, oh, I'm either gonna grow it or I'm gonna sell it, all right? Well, what about everything else in between? What about the security guard who's guarding that facility? What about the the packaging company that's producing the packages, the, the bottles or the labels for these other companies like the alcohol companies? What about the HR person? What about the guy who's, who's running the HR company for cannabis? Um, I mean, there's so many different aspects of, of ways to make money in this industry. I, you know, and I've always told everybody it's 
take your, your, your strengths that you, your skills that you have for your current job, but apply that to cannabis That's because great. there's an opportunity to do that. Whether you're an, you're an attorney, right? You can become a cannabis attorney, whether you, like I said, you're a security guard. Now you can specialize in, in guarding cannabis facilities. Uh, whether you're maybe a, a, an HVAC mechanical engineer, you can go and help design the ins and outs of how am I going to, you know, quality control my air and my grow. You know, so that whatever your strengths are, it can be applied to cannabis. And now you get to charge that cannabis premium price. I right? love it. I love and not it. only you get to charge more, but you're, there, there's a, such a great opportunity as, as cannabis is expanding and getting legal in more states. There's that means there's more grows to build, more businesses to be structured. And, and that means they're going to need more bodies and more people who are talented and skilled to do these things. Right. And you know, on the show, previous guests that we've had, you know, that were in the personal development space, you guys know that when I was in my darkest time, it was really surrounding myself with the right mentors. Uh, these things that we keep using this word mastermind, which, which really is just a group of people getting together that have a like-minded affiliations and want to have best practices. So if there's 10 people that own dispensaries or 10 people that have a business that they want to start in the cannabis space or the cannabis community by surrounding themselves with professionals they're now getting access and what I always try to say is you're collapsing time when you have organizations like this right um, give us a little bit of a background on what you think right now uh, is headed what are the top three would you say opportunities in the space for somebody that's just super green no pun intended right <laughs> but they want to get into the space they're like all right I'm gonna to come to the seminar but what are the three that you think that you could point to to say you know, that's not saturated or that there's a plenty of opportunity in that specific lane, if you will. Well, I mean, if we look at right now, cannabis, some of the fastest growing sectors are drinks, mm. right? The, the drink beverage category, which only took up about 1% of the cannabis uh, uh, SKU sales last week, uh, but at, or last week, last year. Um, so we know that's one of the fastest growing sectors right now. Uh, obviously, vapes are consistently solidly sold across the states. Um, but I think the biggest opportunity is really going to lie in as new states come open, right? Mm, I mean, as right. we talk about like New Jersey and New York right now, who have have their application open to accept applications so that people can start either a grow a dispensary or, or something within the space. But when we see these new states come on, that's where you see the biggest yeah. opportunity, yeah. In, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, really quick, I wanted to touch on something you just said, too. It's not about everything that you do know. You know, I mean, there's a lot to understand and learn in cannabis. But I can go and get a book on it and learn on how to grow, right? But right. does that mean that I'm going to become a professional grower? Probably not until I get my hands in, in in the dirt, right, and start to actually grow some 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 plants, or or I get trained by somebody who has their hands in the plants. Um, so I, I do believe that this space, cannabis, and just as in in general, requires more hands-on experience or to actually do it versus learning about it. You know, they say yeah. those who can't can't do teach. Um, and, and I think that's really does apply into this space today. Uh, and, and it really is coming down to having more of a mentor, somebody who's been through that and someone who can help guide me on, on how to properly do that. Um, Cause you know, it's, it's especially if a lot of folks think that they want to grow until they get into the weeds and they actually start growing. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy because every different plant is uniquely its own. Every yep. strain, it's going to eat a little bit different. It's just like you and I, right? We might eat different foods at different times and we might metabolize them differently. You know, I mean, our shit's not going to smell the same. <laughs> right. Uh, and so every body is different. And so is every plant. So maybe you might have been read a book or, or learned on how to grow a sativa or how to grow some some OG Bubba Kush. But until you get into the, again, get into the weeds and get your elbows into the dirt, it's not going to be the same. It's not quite as textbooks as you would like it to believe, you know? So uh, what we're really doing is we're, we're teaching you that hands-on experience, you know, where some of our workshops, you'll see people physically, you know, cutting plants and physically cloning them and going through that process of what it takes to actually open up a nursery or what it takes to actually get to the point of producing a successful harvest. Yeah. Um, so that's some, some of the stuff that, you know, we're really trying to uh, uh, pay it forward and give give to the, our fellow, you know, canopeneurs, the guy that wants to get into the space, but doesn't know where to start or why to start where, where we suggest him to start. Welcome back to the show, folks. And if you're like me, Dr. Sadie Allison of Go Love CBD and Chris Franchino of Master Mentors Lives had me at the edge of my mother see so many questions answered in such little time it's unbelievable now this next clip involves mr brett worley 
president of MC Nutraceuticals, where we get into what cannabinoids target which ailment. Now, you guys stay tuned and keep it locked right here on Cannabis Talk 101. We want to work with people that are going to be here for a long time, making pre-rolls, making cartridges, making tinctures, and we want to help them expand and do a great job in the state and be able to deliver on time. So we don't have a minimum. We help everybody. I don't know what you're going to do in the future, so there's no small order or small client because tomorrow you might not be a small farmer, you might be a large farmer. Our biggest thing is we're going to give you red carpet, white glove service. People can get in contact with us at info at bearflagcali.com. And how could you guys configure something? Because I can relate to what Blue's asking for. That weed that we used to smoke when we were younger and just get the giggles <laughs> over it, right? Yeah. You'd get high, you'd yeah. feel high, you'd feel fun, you'd feel happy. And I'm sure there's some weed that does that for some people. Yeah. But there's the OG this, the da 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 The downers, would, the uppers, the... With a gun to the back of my head, I would probably do... You know, I'd, I'd do a Delta 8 blend, so it's a little bit less psychoactive, and then I'd put probably a 15% CBG and 15% THCV. That'd be the first guess just because of the energy that both those cannabinoids are allegedly supposed to bring. So I think that's that's really what you're looking for. You're, you want to be high, and you want to be high energy, and you want to be having a good time. So that, that's just the guess off the top of my head. The, the short answer is, is THCV, CBN got me into the space really so i was already in the cbd space but cbn you know i was working a crazy amount trying to make this company work out the, the original one and you know working 100 to 110 hours a week we were 24 7 lab too so you know if Busting something it out. happened at 2 a.m i gotta be there. there so i was having issues turning <coughs> off my brain and someone it was just like one of the first batches of pure cbn ever made and i i just took it just as the isolate like 50 to 100 milligrams best Ow. sleep i'd had in I don't know. Well, years. Thanks for bringing some. Years. Yeah. years. Well, well, we can. I just talked we, about my we can dreams. Have, we can have stuff here tomorrow. So yeah. okay. that, that is true. <laughs> Better than Amazon, <laughs> baby. Faster than Amazon. So, Great answer. So that that opened my eyes because CBD never did anything for me personally, and sure. I go, this can help people. And, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, is you know, I'm you know, I'm here to run my business and make sure my employees have jobs and, and make money for myself. But you know, I'm actually passionate about these cannabinoids. And then the next one was Delta 8, and then the one after that was THCV, which THCV is, uh, you know, allegedly an appetite suppressant, and it, it works for me personally. Um, and it's also a stimulant, so it's like a like a two milligrams of Adderall, you know, like yeah. instead of like 30, you know, sure. like because you know I don't, I've taken Adderall before. Man, I'll be out for three days. And not to take a stab at pharmaceuticals, but I'll do it anyway. Is is you know I I've seen people go down these paths, and it, and it is kind of a you know, there's there's room for pharmaceuticals, but there's also room for alternative medicines, and that's what dietary supplements have done within the, in the nutraceutical space. But I I see these cannabinoids as having extreme promise. I mean, I'll tell I'll tell a story about we have a blend CBG CBGA blend, and it's called our it's our cancer blend. And my buddy had liver cancer. He's actually my driver in Vegas, and we were driving back, and I overnighted him. You know, once again, next day, our yeah. you know this one-to-one -one blend is 1,500 milligrams of CBG, 1,500 milligrams of 15 uh, of CBGA, and there's literature in mice that shows that these cannabinoids reduce tumor growth. So I we, I just sent it over to him. He was about to be on the liver uh, on the transplant list, and in three days he started feeling significantly different. And I don't I don't know the chills. exact I don't know the exact yeah, timeline of when he, when he went and did the scan but he was going to be on the transplant list and he went and did his scan and it was completely gone. Eradicated, 100% wow. eradicated. The doctors had no idea what to even say. They go, whatever you did, Keep doing that. Keep, keep, just keep taking it. Just That's keep, the reason why we do this show, Brett, for stories like that. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. that is the that reason why we're both here. While I'm here, while I, I'm such an advocate of it, and That's I love cold. all your products right here because I don't actually smoke flour like that, but I use everything that you have on your site. That's like, oh my God, I want to use this for that. Actually, I don't use everything on it. I want to start using more of it because I see the benefits more and more by talking to guys like you. Like, And not only that, people that are regular smokers, need to be more educated on this because so awesome. many people just think i just want to smoke weed yeah and it's yeah. like cool and don't get me wrong i think it's cool and if well, that's what I, you want to do but yeah, if you really want the full effect of what well, this cannabinoid right. plant can do for you
I need to give me some of that CBG they were talking about, right? That's for sure. So welcome back to the Cannabis Talk 101, where me and Teddy are giving you the best educational clips of 2023. And it's been an absolute pleasure presenting these videos, and I hope to catch you guys at some of our many live events that we have coming up in the future. Now, this last clip involves Brian Buckley and U.S. Navy veteran Al Byrne, where they discuss how the U.S. government has been blocking medical advancements in cannabis research, something that should never have been done in the history of time. So check this out. When you look at the government and you talk about all these things and you realize that the U.S. government holds a patent on cannabis plant compounds, which is patent number 6630507, and you go, wait a minute, why do they even have that? What are they even covering up and not wanting to do more research on when they hold that? It's like, you yep. know, they literally hold the patent on it, but yet we're not spending the money to do more research on it. We have Israel leading the pack. We're funding some stuff over there. They're funding more stuff over there, meaning Israel and we're not doing enough in my opinion when we know that it works and the government knows it works that's why they have the fucking patent on it yeah and like you know al let's kind of break this down shotgun style of what we just discussed over the past like 10 minutes so the united states of america financed dr rafael mishulam of israel to study cannabis to see if it could work you know for post-traumatic stress all the other things it came back with positive results which probably the united states of america was hoping it wouldn't but they understand that it works, so now they go out and get a patent that they can hold on to it, yet they still suppress veterans through NIDA or through the VHA or through the DEA. And now I just want to kind of get your, you know, you touched on that in the book. I mean, I don't want to give too much of the book away without people going on to buy. It's a great read. But why do you think the government is working that way when they have something that works, they funded it, yet they're still saying no, no, no and suppressing it? Is it the pharmaceutical kind of lobby? What What were your thoughts? I haven't a clue. Hmm. It, 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 it makes no sense. And, and actually, the patent you're talking about is two. One is to use cannabis as a very potent antioxidant, anti-cancer. And the other is it's a neuroprotective. In, in fact, cannabis is yep. not, and this is from Shulam, Cannabis is not only a neuroprotectant, in other words, it protects your nervous system, it also can regenerate your damaged nervous system. Hence, uh, we have the example of Barbara Douglas, a federal patient, now deceased, that I worked with for 30 years. Uh, Barbara had multiple sclerosis, and uh, it was deeply affected her physically. She got put on the legal list on smoking cannabis. Now, I showed up at her house uh, about, about a couple of months after she started smoking the cannabis, which was in a beautiful little town called Storm Lake, Iowa. And uh, she was in a wheelchair. If she moved it all out of that wheelchair, she was using a cane. Uh, she was in considerable pain. I uh, spent the weekend there at her home. She was very gracious and I left. Uh, I came back uh, about a year later, just, just about a year later. She met me standing at the front door. Parked in the yard was a rather large RV. Now, keep in mind, uh, MS patients also have a problem with going blind. You've got this uh, RV parked in the yard. She says, I, I, want, I want to show you something now. Would you get in the RV, please? I got in the RV. She started it up, we took off. She drove down the road, turned the thing around, came back, parked it in the yard, and walked back into her house mm. with no assistance at all. When I left that weekend, instead of her sitting in a wheelchair a year later, again, to show me, show me something. Thank you, Barbara. She, uh, she said goodbye to me by leaving her backyard uh, on Stone Lake on a jet ski. This is a woman a year before that couldn't couldn't get out of a wheelchair. Uh, and again, uh, that's that's neuroprotection. Uh, and it, it actually has at what Dr. Mishulam informed me was that when, when you got MS, the sheath around your nerve deteriorates. And by using cannabis, that sheath actually regenerates, pat, protects the nerve, and, and you're, you're not good to go, but you're a hell of a lot better off. And at least you can get up and walk. I mean, for goodness sakes, Al, your stories are just tremendous. We're going to take a